You know, the risk and responsibility for Brick House over the last couple of years has been pretty substantial, and I felt it even more without him. Um, so I decided to put Brick House on a safe mooring um, at Moor Safe in Prickly Bay in Grenada and try sailing on a few other people's boats. As much as I left the responsibility and the risk of Brick House sailing actively behind in Prickly Bay, sailing on other people's boats, other men's boats, definitely comes with a whole new set of risks and responsibilities. So I kind of came crying back to Brick House. That's my home, that's my boat, it's my sanctuary. And so I was pretty much back on Brick House pretty quickly after those two dating escapades. And then of course there is the risks and responsibilities of a new relationship on top of the risks and responsibilities of the boat. So um, yeah, some things gained, some things lost getting on somebody else's boat. But stupidly I thought I'd try one more time and I flew to Croatia. I went as crew leaving the relationship part out. Done any maintenance for a couple years. He hadn't changed the oil since he bought the boat. And, you know, I went and fixed his toilet with a butter knife because he didn't have any tools. Well, he had two screwdrivers and vice grips, but he didn't have any other tools and the screwdrivers didn't fit the hose clamps that I needed to take off to fix it. I mean, it was a fun boat and it was fun to be in Croatia. Um, you know, we had a couple kayaks and we did a lot of kayaking and that was a lot of fun, but... Yourself. His rudder was about to fall off. There was a lot of other broken things too. So I fixed his electric toilet with a butter knife. And then the other battle that I got to fight was bed bugs. Don't ever go sailing on a boat with bed bugs. You know, I was told that I'm tough. I've sailed around the world. So what's wrong with me? Why can't I just put up with a few bed bugs? So I battled the bed bugs on my own. I tried to get rid of it, just killing one by one by one until I killed them all. But of course there's larvae. Sort of an endless battle. I did not win the bed bug battle. Instead, I left with a whole bunch of bed bug bites all over my face, all over my neck, all over my chest, all over my arm, all over my body. So after I got off the boat, I took some time. I took some sightseeing tours around Croatia. I got to see the old city, a few islands. My next battle was to not bring the bed bugs home with me. So I checked into a hotel, it had lots of hot water, and it had a laundry service that used lots of hot water and lots of hot air. I wash everything, dry everything in lots of hot water and kill anything that I might have brought on with me. Luckily, I won that battle. Um, I was very glad to get off that boat in five days <laughs> and see a little bit of Croatia before I flew home and my brother's house and uh, see a little bit more of them before I went back to Brick House. I had not been to a boat show, to the Newport Boat Show or any other boat show for at least 18 years and I was returning from Croatia just in time to go to the Newport Boat Show, so why not? So this time was a little bit different. This time, you know, I have been cruising around the world for the last 15 or 17 years, whatever it is. And, um, you know, I have a thousand miles left to a circumnavigation. So I have the boat and I have all the gadgets that work and all of the, you know, every boat part, um, you know, that we've put on Brick House has been really high quality and works really well. So really I was there looking at all the products that I already had. And it was cool, especially to see a lot of old friends in Newport. So for me, the boat show was more about visiting those vendors of all of the greatest products that I have and just asking questions, making sure I'm doing the right maintenance, making sure I'm not missing anything. You know, I had a few questions about my engine and a few questions about, uh, well, about a lot of things. Part of the boat show for me was to figure out what to do from here on in. Do I want to sail on other people's boats? 
maybe, maybe not. Maybe not the one in Croatia. <laughs> um, do I want to sell Brick House? Do I want to sell Brick House and buy a different kind of boat? Um, do I want to just bring Brick House to a really fancy marina and live a life of luxury at a marina? Maybe sail on other people's boats occasionally from that fancy marina? Um, you know, do I want to just, you know, put Brick House someplace and make it my condo and go off and travel other places? The boat show for me um, really was a time of, you know, making some decisions about what to do with Brick House, where to go, what to do how to finish my circumnavigation, if to finish my circumnavigation. Let me show you some of the options that I thought of while I was there. Some new maintenance guidelines that we came out with for some of our customers. Give you a copy of those. Oh, okay, great, cool, <laughs> cool thank enough. you. Gosh, I got years left of my Copper Co. How can I give up now? Copper Co. is not maintenance free. Some people think it is, and it's not. You have to clean it from time to time. Warmer waters, you clean it more often than colder waters. But it works everywhere. It's just a matter of taking care of it and cleaning it when it needs it. But it's so nice after two and a half years to not have to reapply bottom paint. Since the show opened on Thursday morning, we've had 52 of our owners stop by the booth, and all of them going, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Including Beetlejuice is out 13 years, and he just did his first touch-up. So keep enjoying it. All right. All right. Well, good. The one last thing to worry about. This is a good thing. So. Nice to see all the latest and greatest of Ray Marine, but I pretty much have the latest and greatest, and I have them on the other end of the phone, so nothing's broken. There is my Viking life raft. I don't need any inspections of that yet, so no questions to be asked about that. Now, thinking about leaving my boat, whether to be to travel on other people's boats or just to travel around in general, I've stumbled on these guys. But it, it's very reassuring. You just pull out your phone and check. There's no, there's no check to make see if you put the covers, the covers on. No. No, well, you got to assume you forgot something. You always assume you forgot something, right? Or your kids left a light. I have kids who leave lights on on my boat and run no. the battery down. I really like this option. It measures the depth of the water in your bilge and how many times your bilge pump turns on. And that would be so reassuring while I was going. Temperature, temperature, temperature of the bilge. bilge to worry about freezing. This was designed for a low power usage. It was originally designed for both on mooring and a large internal battery. And it only draws up your battery when your battery is being charged. I did buy this, the Sensar Marine monitor pay like a hundred or 120 bucks a year or something and, and you get uh, you know all over the world you can see what's happening with the boat it's really such a simple little system you know you can uh, look what's going on with your battery the voltage notifications can be sent uh, the bilge pump how many times it's running how deep the water is in the bilge the temperature in the bilge so you know if it's freezing um, it also records your GPS position and has a geofence around the boat, so if the boat moves or somebody takes it and takes a little trip on it, you'll know that it's gone. It even has an impact resistance, so if somebody hits the boat, you know, I always wonder when I'm away if somebody hits the boat or jumps on the boat, this will record an impact of, of certain amounts of G-force and send you a message about that as well. It's pretty cool has a maintenance-free internal battery. It charges it every time that the boat is connected to shore power or um, the alternator runs or you know solar or wind is coming in just when the boat's charging so it's not gonna drain the battery. It's also waterproof as you saw in the little container there. This will give me the option to be able to leave the boat, go away and feel comfortable that I know what's going on with it. Here's the main guy right here. Uh, my 2013 Max sales are still Max going sales. strong, so there's no questions or anything to be done here. My Victron color control and all that's still going well. Yeah, I wish I had a water maker. There's my Sea Frost, that's still going well after 17 years. My Kiss wind generator is so easy to fix in the field, but it's broken a lot. Maybe I should get a new one, or maybe not. Or maybe I should just get new solar panels. It's always a question, repair or upgrade. Or do I buy a new dinghy? I guess I better go back and look at Patrick's video on how to choose the best one. Wish I picked up more of these while I was there, but boy, they keep everything from sliding. Oh, cool. I got a couple yesterday, so I'm awesome. trying them out too. Thank you. <laughs> I think I have a PYI shaft seal okay. on my boat. How often am I supposed to change them? It occurred to me when I saw your boot that I should probably ask you that question. The, the legal answer is the bellows should be replaced every six years. Oh. It's a piece of rubber in a boat, and if it's submerged in diesel fuel for six years, that's how long it's going to last. 
problem is we don't know what happens to it. Many people change a lot less than that, but that's the right answer. Okay. And if it doesn't have any diesel surrounding the area? You can go a lot longer. Like, what's a lot longer? Like, when should I really start to worry? Uh, like, start looking at it in six years. But basically, making sure the bellows is soft and flexible, that there's no cracking in the bellows. Okay. You know, if it's soft and flexible, it's going to do the job. But the problem is that if you don't replace it and it, it gets tired and you have to haul the boat to change it, it gets more expensive. Because it becomes it emergency. Yeah. <laughs> so I had a really hard time swallowing the price tag of this thing, but... It would really help me be a little bit more independent on my own on the mooring, so. Are you ready for yours yet? My what? A copy of my book. <laughs> yep, that's Bob Bitchin right there. Don't get discharged. And you know what? There's a fire sale on Bob Bitchin right now. <laughs> get them while they're not. <laughs> This fancy mooring pole will really help me become more independent to be able to come up to a mooring ball on my own, be able to put a line through the um, hole in the mooring pennant and bring the line back up to me. He demonstrated how to do it and gosh, it makes it so much simpler. I've since used it and it really is a wonderful device. Maybe just maybe I should give up sailing maybe and get a trawler problem. like all old folks eventually do. Um, yeah, I could buy a trawler and not have to worry about the sailing part of it. That might be nice. Oh, but there is the fuel expense and the damage to the planet. But look at the luxury. I could be so comfortable. It's kind of like an RV with a big fuel tank and a 3,000 mile rain. I could go park it in a big fancy marina, a big fancy boat in a big fancy marina. And this looks like a nice place. Or maybe bring Rick well, Kelsey. Well, maybe that's an option. So where, where is Marina Capcana? So many go to Okay, okay. And, and how safe is that for hurricanes? Uh, Very yeah, safe. Yeah, the safest marine in the Caribbean. Really? Yeah. Okay. Safe. Yeah, it looks very well protected in that little... Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eatland Marina, and you see all the building around there. Okay, okay. And is it a new marina, or is it has it been We're around 20 for 20 years? 20 years. 20 years. Okay. And if I came there, you know, as a full-time live aboard for an extended period, what what would be, like, why would I want to do that? Well, you have, we are, you will be in a gay community with golf course, Question City, Echo Park, seven hotels in operation, more than 2,000 rooms, private beach for the community. So you can and you can be inside a nice marina with 23 restaurants in town, and you can enjoy during the hour stay at our, our, our marina. Okay, okay, that sounds like it might be a nice option. Also, you can use your dinghy and track here and enjoy this part of the marina with more than 10 restaurants okay. with different kind of... And what's what's that down there? It's our beach. Oh wow, so there's some nice snorkeling, it looks like... Yeah, you can do snorkeling and white sands and you can enjoy during your stay. Okay. We are at 10 minutes away from the Putacana Okay, airport. okay, so it's easy to get crew in and out if I actually want to take the boat out of the marina yeah. and go sailing. Yep. Yeah. Or is this the best option here? <laughs> Maybe these are the best options. Oh, we're getting blocked. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Rebecca, it's good to see you again. It's been yeah. a little while. So good happy to see you back here in the States. Um, I met Patrick on a offshore passage up to yep. yep, I met Patrick on the offshore passage up to his when I was crew and he's a captain. Oh. Long time ago, yeah. Something like that. And um, led to your circumnavigation. And it led to my circumnavigation. Mm -hmm. So now with Patrick Vaughn, mm -hmm. I would like to know what offshore passage up to is. Help me out with crew. Sure, you really just have to let us know what your planned itinerary is. We'll type it up and we'll work together to agree on what we're sending out. We send it to our members, about 400 active members right now. And if they're interested in joining you, they'll simply just uh, send their sailing resume to you with their contact information. You guys discuss what you want to do. 
and then you make plans. It's as easy as that. And, and what are most of your food like? I mean, do they work? Are they, do they have any time? Because I want to go swimming. Yeah, no, offshore sailing takes time. If you only have two weeks of vacation a year, you're married, have kids, your wife's not going to let you take those two weeks. So it's really more geared toward the person that's retired or is self-employed or they consider their own schedule, which again, a lot of our members are. We're traveling at six or seven knots, so you have to have time yeah, to do offshore sailing. The weather is nice because I am a fair weather sailor. Exactly. So again, the demographics of our membership are more people in their you know, 50s to 70 that are retired, have some money, they can afford to get to and from the boat. But how do I know who I'm getting? Did you do any screening? We get used to what I call the flavor of the opportunities. It lets uh, you know if uh, they've uh, gone with us before, or they've been on the Swan program, or with the Goldberg Skipper before. They also pay a little bit of money, so they have a little skin in the game. So they, you know, it's like a, a first day at work or at school, everybody's on the best behavior. And they actually are excited to be there, uh, and they want to impress you because they want to stay. Right, so right. it works so out. So will I know? Will I know about the person before they ever email me, or they'll email me and then I'll sort of have to ask? You they, they contact you with their written resume. It's sort of like a work resume, except just what courses they've taken, send you what miles they've done, and the important things. Um, but really, uh, once we put you in touch, you have their sailing resume, but then you can do a Zoom call or you know talk to them over the call, and it's up to you. You've been sailing enough now that with a few questions, you decide to scope them out. And, you know, but just sort of suss out, make sure you pick the right person. Yeah, well, I obviously haven't exactly done well with picking people. And what sites have you been using? Okay, so <laughs> OPPO is all about just offshore sailing. It's our niche. It's all we do. A lot of companies do crew networking as the side thing. But it's all we do. Uh, unlike the free sites, you call, you usually get a call back and uh, response right away. So that's how uh, we're different from them. And I think we'll be able to help you out. You know, we're not promising you another Patrick, but certainly uh, nice, on. nice people. Send me you never phone. know what happens. Well, maybe not another. It's Patrick. not totally maybe, up to maybe me. Maybe a little different. This time. <laughs> but certainly, you know, people uh, that have the time, the resources, yeah. and the skills is yeah. the important thing. You know, if you don't know how to sail, go take lessons. We're not entry level. We're right. the graduate school right. for people that are looking to make the transition to offshore. We jokingly say we unteach what they teach you at ASA. Because offshore is different than coastal sailing. Ah, well, here's another option. Hi, sir. Hi. I'm wondering what you think I could get for my Valiant 40, my 1976 Valiant 40. Oh, at least a million dollars. Oh, perfect. That's a good option. I've decided, um, well, one thing was clear. I love Brick House. I love the cruising lifestyle. I love the sailing lifestyle. Maybe I just like the at anchor lifestyle. Maybe it's not about sailing. Maybe it's really about, you know, living in the tropics in a nice, easygoing place where I can just you know, just wake up in the morning, not have any plans, decide to get off the boat or not get off the boat, you know, go sit in a local restaurant and just all of a sudden my day is mapped. I'm going off with this person or I'm having lunch or I'm going to this party or I'm going fishing or I'm going snorkeling, you know, whatever comes up. The day is completely open to whatever comes along. You know, where else can I do that? And it's also very clear to me that, you know, after a lot of thought, you know, living in a house in the USA or living in a house really anywhere for more than six months at a time, six months might be okay, but, you know, living anywhere for any length of time, I've become a nomad. I like moving around. I like seeing new places. I like being confused in new countries. Um, you know, I just, I gotta keep traveling till I can't anymore. What also is very clear to me is I have to finish this circumnavigation on Brick House. You know, Brick House has been in my life for more than half of my life, or half of my adult life anyways, and she's gotta finish my circumnavigation with me. You know, I still have Patrick's ashes in the closet, and he's gonna finish the circumnavigation with me. You know, it used to be about finishing with somebody that I loved, and when I left South Africa, you know, I really had hoped that Michael would be that somebody that I wouldn't just cross an ocean with, but that I'd get to the other side, have a long future with up ahead, and always be able to look back at crossing this ocean together with fondness. Yes, I started my circumnavigation with somebody that I loved, but I don't feel the need that I did six months ago, say, or a year ago or two years ago to finish the circumnavigation with somebody that I love. And trying to combine you know, finding crew with finding somebody that I want to spend you know, the foreseeable future with. Um, 
it's just too much. It's too much to combine into a short time in a small boat uh, with so much pressure. If I wait around in Grenada to do that, I might like spend the next 10 years sitting in Grenada on my boat, not having completed my circumnavigation and possibly never actually completing it. So I've decided to knock that requirement right out the window and just be happy with platonic crew, male and female, young and old, experienced and unexperienced. Well, it's, they all have to have a good amount of experience. That is a prerequisite, but um, anyways, I'm the captain of Brick House now. And I have a pretty good idea what I want with crew and finish my circumnavigation this cruising season. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I'm gonna take my time. It's gonna be a slow cruise up. This might be, who knows, the last time I ever enjoy this part of the world. So I'm gonna take it and enjoy it and love it as I go. An update, um, I did find crew. Um, I found Henry in um, England. He's 36 years old, a hot dog sailor on real small boats and you know a bigger boat as well. And uh, he'll be a lot of fun and maybe we'll get some great videos put together. And Suzanne, who has lived on another boat for, for about three years, very similar to Brick House. Um, and she will be sailing with me as well. She's a lady about my age. And um, so it'll be fun to have a lady on board and a young man and we'll sail off in probably about six weeks and start making our way up the Caribbean chain of islands very slowly, making videos, enjoying the sailing life, enjoying cruising, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I'll be spending the next few weeks, five or six weeks, just getting the boat totally ready for crew. I'm having uh, new cushions made, we have sheets to fit and enough pillows for everybody. There's the dripless packing seal. Looking at that well, making sure it's good since we're definitely over the six year mark. We'll, we'll fix that wind generator that seems to have broken again. Um, I'll fix the autopilot that was giving a little bit of trouble last time I sailed the boat. Want to make sure that that's all good. Um, going through all, all bits of the boat, making sure everything's seaworthy, going through all the seacocks, going through the plumbing and the electrics everything's good to go and that there won't be any immediate problems doing some work on the toilet on oh, the head and yeah just basically getting the boat ready to go the provisioning ready and you know when these guys show up i just want to be able to go within days of them arriving um, and give them a good little shakedown cruise and get north get going be ready to go keep on watching because with this crew ha, something happens I'll let you know in the next video what happened, um, but right out of the gate there was a little bit of a problem, but uh, we'll make it work. We'll make it happen. Uh, crew woes.